people now is a wonderful storyteller by the name of Eddie Lenahan in Ireland. And he's written a series of stories called St. Patrick Was a Gentleman. And they're wonderful stories. They are historically accurate in terms of what we know about Patrick, but written with a sense of humor. And Eddie has been very kind enough to allow me to tell some of his stories. Now, St. Patrick was a very unpredictable man. And so you couldn't blame him, considering the kind of people that he was dealing with at the time. Now, one time he was down in Tipperary. It was November. It was a very cold, damp, rainy, wintry day. And he was looking for a place to stay for himself and his companions. And because he was in Cashel, known as Cashel Marie, Cashel of the King, he thought that he would be dealing with a higher class of people. So he knocked on the door of this fancy house, a man opened it up, and when Patrick told him what he wanted, the man started to laugh. <laughs> what do you think? We're running a hotel around here for the likes of you? You see that white thorn bush over there across the road? There's plenty of space in it. There'll be plenty of room for yourself and your companions tonight. Well, now, obviously, Patrick was not very happy with this response. And his followers were shivering in glee and excitement how St. Patrick was going to <clears throat> punish this ignorant buttock. But Patrick didn't do that. Patrick's his smile, his gentle smile, and he put his hand up in the direction of the man. And he said, may your house be the highest. May your cattle be the whitest. And may you marry the most beautiful woman in the community. Well, Patrick's followers were flabbergasted altogether. What's the matter with him? Is something wrong with him? If this gets out, you will get no respect at all. But no one said anything <clears throat> because it was Patrick. And the man hearing who had blessed him decided to take advantage of it. He built a very large house up in the highest mountain, of course, to bring attention to himself. And then he went out and he bought a herd of white cows. And again, of course, decoration, bring attention to himself. And as it turned out, he married the most beautiful woman in the community. Well, Kilpatrick continued his journeys, and about a week later, he was down in Kilkenny. And again, it was a terribly cold, wintry afternoon, and his companions were complaining about the hunger and the cold. Again, he went to a house and knocked on the door. The man opened it up, and Patrick told him what he wanted, and the man said, Oh, come in, come in, you're welcome as the flowers in May, come in, false, you're welcome. Well, this man couldn't do enough for Patrick and his followers. Wonderful food, the finest wines, a comfortable bed for each one of them, and he even cooked them breakfast the next morning before they left. And Patrick said to the man, Money I have none, but I will be glad to give you my blessing if you will accept it. Well, the man immediately got down on his knees and Patrick's followers, and they were so excited again to see how Patrick was going to give honor and respect to this man who had treated him so well. And once again, Patrick raised his hand over the man and he said, May your house be the smallest. May your cattle be the blackest. And may you marry a woman that's no picture. <laughs> well, Patrick's followers couldn't believe it. They were so embarrassed. And this poor man was down on his knees crying. How could he say that? How could he do this? But no one said anything because it was Patrick. 
Well, that man, he did marry a very plain looking woman, but she was very smart. And when he proposed building a house way up on the mountain, a very large house, she said, no, no, no. I was brought up and raised in the small house down here in the valley. That's where we'll build. And that's what they did. And when he proposed going out and buying a herd of white cattle, she said, no, no, no. Those are just decoration. They'll not help us in any way. We'll buy the black pollies. They're good for the milk. And that's what they did. Now, in the meantime, St. Patrick went back to Tara to rest himself from his labors. And that winter in Ireland, one of the worst storms in its history swept across the countryside. And the winds were so fierce that the man who built his house up on the mountain, the winds tore the roof off it and it collapsed. But the man who had built his house down in the valley, the winds just went across missed it, causing no destruction whatsoever. And to make matters worse, the O'Neill clan used to raid into that area on quite frequently. And of course, the white cattle were found very easily and were gone. But the black pollies, the black pollies, they were covered under the dark. And to make things even more worse, the man who had built his house way up on top of the mountain, his wife seeing that she no longer had her beautiful house and her white cattle, packed her bags, went back to her own family, leaving the man brokenhearted. But the man who built his house down in the valley, he had his nice, comfortable, warm house. He had his black pollies. And he and his wife were very happy together. So you can see St. Patrick's curse, or maybe his blessing, was correct in both situations. Which leads to the old belief, always examine the words of a saint at least twice. Thank you very much. <laughs>